A complete standstill or stasis of an evolutionary lineage for scores if not hundreds of millions of years is very puzzling. There is no documentation of the branching of the... Now, these next ones have to do with hominoids, our man, ape to man, or ancestor to man, these next ones. There is no documentation of the branching event between the hominoid and the chimpanzee lineages. Everybody says we are closely related to a chimpanzee that, that we have a common ancestor with a chimpanzee. To make matters worse, most hominoid fossils are extremely incomplete. They may consist of a part of the mandible or the upper part of the skull without face or teeth and only part of the extremities. Virtually all of them are somewhat controversial. Next statement. The various steps in the history of the change from mate to man is entirely based on inferences, and any part of it may be refuted at any time. Australopithecus populations did not change very much in the whole 1.5 million year long period. It was a period of stasis. With Homo erectus, another period of stasis was apparently reached, and changes in the 1.5 million years of ex existence were relatively minor. Cro-Magnons were highly successful but did not change appreciably in the nearly 100,000 years of their dominance. So you have all these ancestors, possible ancestors of humans, they have plenty of their fossils and they stay exactly the same for over for like 100,000 and 1.5 million years. And at the end of his, near the end of his book, he says, once a species has acquired effective isolating mechanisms, it may not materially change for millions of years. Stasis apparently indicates the possession of a genotype, that's the genes, that is able to adjust all changes of, to all changes of the environment without the need for changing its basic phenotype, the body. So that's kind of like that two-part. Body stays the same even though it's changing uh, inside. 